Hey, thanks for clicking. Uh, we're gonna set up a M5 Stick C running home thing. This is gonna be a device that's gonna let you control your Spotify or Sonos speakers or Alexa or whatever, uh, also your lights and anything you have set up in Home Assistant. Uh, it's just gonna take 10 minutes, so let's get started. Cool, so assuming you have the hardware installed and Home Assistant installed, uh, we'll get started. So you gotta make sure ESP Home is installed. Um, We'll go through this quick. If you go into Home Assistant, go to Settings, then Add-ons, then the Add-on Store, and then look up ESP Home. And then you're gonna click the first one, click Install, and then Start, and then Show in Sidebar. And then while we're here, we're also gonna make sure the file editor is installed also. So click on File Editor, Install, start, show and sidebar. Now we can go back to ESP Home and make a new device. Cool. So since I'm not over HTTPS, it's not gonna let me connect to my USB directly. So we're gonna open this in a new tab also, and then hit continue. We're gonna name this M5 stick, doesn't matter. Uh, pick a device type, doesn't matter because we're gonna paste over this stuff and also we're gonna paste over encryption key. So skip that. Device showed up, it's offline. We're just gonna modify this quick. And so we have our name at, up at the top and then everything else we're gonna replace. And so in the description, you can see this M5 Stick C plus wiki page. So we're gonna copy everything but the name and then we can go through this. So back to ESP Home paste over everything but the name and let's scroll to the top. So I'm gonna talk about quick how HomeThing talks to Home Assistant and Spotify and Sonos and stuff like that. And then we can go through building. So HomeThing, this is running on your actual device and ESP Home is also running on your actual device, it's included. And so that is what talks to ESP Home like we're in Chrome here, the Docker that's running on Home Assistant. And then that talks to Home Assistant, which will talk to Spotify and Sonos. So there's a couple steps here, but the benefit of this is that we don't have to actually code stuff specific for Sonos or Spotify or anything like that. You include those in Home Assistant and then everything just works. Cool. And so let's also, while we're here, let's just talk about how this is gonna get built. Um, so ESP Home is going to download a bunch of stuff from GitHub, and so it's going to download C++ code and YAML files. YAML files are like the device file we just made, M5 Stick C. And so it's going to pull in uh, Home Assistant components, uh, which we're going to need to actually like show the menu and play music. Uh, home thing itself, ESP Home is going to get updated and downloaded, and then also any features that you have. In our case, it's the AXP192 to control like the charging, backlight, and battery percent. And then YAML files are files that are included that just help us save uh, time instead of having to copy the, and paste the same code from a bunch of different devices. We can include it in one file and then include that in many uh, devices. So step two we make C++ code from YAML code. And so first we're gonna do that step that I just mentioned, where we include all the YAML files that we downloaded from GitHub in our main device YAML, and then turn that into C++ code. And this is something ESP Home just does by itself, and then it will build it. And so now we have our main generated C++ from our YAML, and that's gonna include all of our C++ external components from GitHub, and then end up with a nice .bin file. And then we're able to upload that to the device. All right, so now that we understand that, we can go through this much quicker. So we've got external components. This is gonna be C++ code. This is gonna control our backlight and charging. We got home thing to show our menu. And then we have media source and Sonos and media player to control an actual speaker and home assistant. And then we have these YAML files that are included. This is gonna just help us with our fonts and also showing like free memory and uptime and stuff. The next little bit is very device specific. So this is gonna help us set up our battery percent, our 
backlight and charging. So we can skip through that until we see button A. Button A is the M5 button at the front. And so when we click that, it's gonna go next menu. Right? And so if we click that for longer than 5, 0.5 seconds, it's gonna go back to the top menu. And so that's gonna help us go back. And so we can see that here for a quick click, it's gonna go next, and then a long click is gonna go up. And we can see that whenever we press a button, the light turns on. So that's this part here. So that's turning the light on up here and then turning it off when we let go. The other button in the side up here, this one's gonna select. So it might play music, no. Uh, and it also does the same thing with the LED. We can skip all the, past this stuff. Deep Slave is gonna turn the device off when it doesn't have battery. Um, and at this point, rotation, so zero rotation. You can also turn it to the side and the menu will update and show the header bar at the top in a kind of landscape mode. Try 90 degrees. Um, you can delete Sonos if you don't use Sonos. Uh, Spotify uses the Spotcast playlists, and so you need that add-on installed also. Um, and then custom, you're able to list Spotify media IDs uh, for playlist or albums or whatever it is, and so you can just pin a bunch of playlists uh, and organize it that way. Media player, this is gonna be of the type Home Assistant Media Player, and so it's gonna load all the Home Assistant states and actually control your beam or whatever your media player is called. So you're gonna replace this with the name of your entity ID of your speaker. If it's a TV, you can change this to TV type. And then we have our sources. So the ID of Sonos is up here. It's body is Spotify. So you can list those or delete those if you're not using them. And then finally, we have uh, custom controls or commands. And so these will show up on the now playing menu for the speaker. So I have group all. Where is it? Here it is. And so that will group all of my speakers together. You can turn your lights on or whatever it is. It's just any home assistant service. And then f second, lastly, we have the media group component. So we're going to put all of our speakers in here. And this is used to show the menu for the speakers, the now playing menu, and also manage the grouping. All right. And then at the end, we have home thing. So you don't need to really modify any of this stuff. You can check all the parameters on GitHub uh, and see what you can do, uh, but we'll just leave this for now. Cool, so let's save this. And then we will go to the getting started and then check it out. So we got all the code from GitHub. We got all the packages from GitHub. We set up our home config or at least our speaker uh, and our group. And here's a, more configured home thing menu. The last thing we need to do is get fonts. So the easiest way to do this is by going to this URL, grabbing these four files, and then back in Home Assistant, if we go to the file editor, we can go to the ESP home folder, and then you can make a folder called fonts. And then upload those four files here. And then once that is done, we can go back to ESP Home and then hit install. So on our M5 stick, we will click the triple dots and then click install, manual download, and modern format. This is gonna download everything from GitHub and then build all the code. So it's gonna take a little while. All right, so it finished and we downloaded our bin file. Great. And so now we can install this over USB by going to the web ESB home tab that we got earlier. Then you can click connect. You might have to hit allow in Chrome and then connect to your device, your M5 stack. And then we can click install, drag your factory or your firmware in, then hit install. So this should take probably two minutes uh, and then you're supposed to leave this page open. So just pause. Great, configuration is installed. So we should see the boot sequence on our device and then it will get to this point where it's trying to connect. If we go back to Home Assistant, we get a notification saying we got a new device. If we check it out, we can click configure and then the second we hit submit, 
it will pop into the menu. So now we have loaded the device and we're able to like control our speakers. So that's all you need to do to get the device set up. Um, if you look at the getting started, there's more information on setting screens. And so you're able to set up uh, more stuff for switches or sensors or lights and stuff like that. Um, but that's it for now. Thank you for watching my video. Adios.